will now request uh, the two commentators that uh, we have, basically the panelists from the earlier discussion, uh, both Professor Oja and uh, Professor Mahadevan, if uh, either one of you, whoever would like to go first on your comments on the panel. Yeah, Mahadevan, please go ahead. Uh, thank you, uh, Ramya, for uh, such a wonderful part two of this uh, panel discussion, which we started so beautifully on January 8th. Uh, wonderful discussions, several ideas that have come through. So let me uh, very quickly, from each of the speakers, I could generate some more questions, uh, sort of by way of more of observations and perhaps a little more thinking and so on. So let me just list them out so that you know we have all of them on the table. Uh, Professor Nidhi Shinivas gave a wonderful uh, sort of a, uh, angle to the whole discussion. And uh, certainly, I think uh, uh, do management concepts, uh, they differ with the context is a very important question. I think uh, we are at the root of that question, which needs to be sort of uh, inquired uh, uh, very deeply and so on. Uh, but uh, somewhere uh, after all these discussions, uh, I was left with a couple of questions after I heard uh, uh, Professor Nidhi Srinivas. Uh, that was, uh, what was the purpose for uh, developing the indigenous management? Uh, is it uh, that uh, the purpose is to include uh, and accommodate everyone? Because you know, I could see those kinds of uh, dimensions, so I thought I will put those on the table. Uh, is it to uh, include everyone, accommodate every view and every possible uh, marginalized and uh, majority and those kinds of things? Is, is it uh, why we want to develop an indigenous uh, uh, management thought? Or is it to develop uh, concepts uh, that solves problems which seem to be not well solved or you know they're left open on the table, which have, uh, have a, a certain context which he was alluding to and so on? Or is it to uh, provide any new insights altogether, uh, which can address a sleuth of problems that might uh, even crop up in the days to come? So you know, those kinds of, uh, I think, additional questions we can uh, put uh, on the table. Uh, Professor Rajan Gupta uh, actually ended with saying, uh, in fact, I think he started and then sort of uh, explained it in a little more detail. Uh, while the, there is a crisis of credibility in terms of our current uh, management thought and practices and so on for, uh, say, about 30 years or more, where from are these new ideas likely to come? So this is a kind of a question, and that led a few questions uh, uh, in my mind, which I thought uh, I would uh, put it for a little more of discussion. Uh, so the question basically is, uh, what is the source for these new insights for the Indian management paradigm? Uh, so uh, naturally, the question that we are asking is, do we need to recognize a certain path dependence, uh, which is uh, uh, very important in many things that we do? And if we need to uh, take cognizance of the role of path dependence, then how far do we need to go as far as this path dependence is concerned? Simply because this is a very important question, because uh, by 1835, we put an abrupt end to a continuity of thought. So therefore, uh, when you talk of indigenous management, that can be just like we say, you know, uh, uh, before common era and common era, in this country, you can say before 1835 and after 1835, because we have uh, two different paths on which we seem to understand knowledge and create knowledge and so on. So I think this is another question which we need to understand when we talk of the sources and so on. The other issue that would also come related to this question is uh, we, if we start with a certain framework or a lens, which is what we do. In fact, many of our, uh, our speakers also had that. Uh, you know, for example, we say Weber, we say Coombs, we have uh, several such, uh, you know, management uh, thinkers with, uh, with that framework, which we were trying to look at. The, that leaves us a much bigger question. If I take a, a blue color bottle, which is square in shape, then I will end up only with a water, which is uh, blue in color and which has a square shape, you know, in, in some sense. Therefore, uh, what do we do with this uh, uh, reference framework? 
do we have to uh, uh, how much of continuity and how much of discontinuity do we have to start afresh and then uh, of course we should have our own credibility of making our arguments that's not the issue but uh, what is the reference framework on which we need to look at all these issues so these kinds of questions came uh, Professor Ben's three dimensional arrays are on the dot. I think it's extremely important for us to look at it. The cultural cognitiveness, the normative and the regulatory path that he finally entered his talk with. And that has led two important questions for us to understand in our journey. First question is what is the leadership role in the Indian management institutions? How will they, in fact, uh, Ashish also talked about it. How will we uh, motivate and incentivize the young scholars to invest in this uh, whole idea of uh, Professor Abhay Oja has also spoken about it. We have discussed it sometime also. What is the role of the leadership? Because institutions are governed by leaders and policies, uh, which he, uh, Professor Ben alluded to as regulatory and so on. Then what is the role of the professional community itself? You know, the senior academicians who form these Indian crop of uh, management academies. Uh, what is our role uh, in this process? I think uh, these enabling mechanisms needs uh, uh, a greater thought, uh, a serious uh, understanding and uh, things of that kind uh, to sort of uh, put together uh, the other two talks which uh, Bhavuk and uh, Professor Bhavuk and uh, Ashish were making. Uh, it left a thought in me. It looks like our journey in this uh, indigenous management thoughts and whatever constructs and so on that we make. I think there are two uh, directions on which we need to travel. One direction is what I call it as uh, conceptual, uh, which means you need to uh, lay our hands on our uh, uh, repository of knowledge, use uh, uh, good uh, uh, logical arguments to create constructs, and uh, which can serve as a framework to look at uh, some of the issues of management. That's one path that we need to go. And the other path that we need to go is what you may roughly call it as empirical, where you have uh, practices, you have so many things happening in the, in the country, which is uh, out of a cultural context, out of a certain continuity in which the society is in and try to cull out some ideas uh, of what perhaps could be uh, you know, uh, called as indigenous management practices and all that. I think these are some of the issues uh, that have come up. I think very interesting discussions, which has uh, opened more questions for us to actually reflect on. And hopefully uh, addressing these issues, we would be able to create a certain kind of a, a, a sort of a white paper or a position paper, whatever you may want to call it, on this whole issue of uh, what do we do about this indigenous management. Thank you for this. Yeah. Thank you so much, Professor Mahadevan.